Uh, this is John from Incantation. You're watching the Dot Metal Interview Podcast. Thank you very much. Hell fucking yeah. And we have a legendary guest returning to the show on this episode of That Metal Interview Podcast. I am speaking of legendary frontman, guitarist, death metal voice, John McEntee of Incantation makes his return to the show to promote their new album, Unholy Deification Relapse Records, to be released August 25th in a couple of days. Unless you're catching this episode after August 25th, then you already have access to the full album. And so he's here to speak of that album, to promote this and that from the album, and their past tours. And he speaks of uh, Kyle, the drummer, the original drummer from the 90s, or should I say the drummer from the 90s, since the 90s, who still works all of their albums, but does not tour anymore since uh, 2018, give or take. And he'll speak about that. So right now, I want to check out uh, one of their latest singles and videos by the name of Concordat, The Pact One. And here it is. Check it out.
Did you melt? This song has to melt your face. Concordat, the Pact One, the first single and music video off of their new album that they are promoting, Unholy Deification, which is out August 25th. And uh, they have a couple of jams from that album out right now. They have two two singles out there. So check them out, support Incantation, and uh, check them out on social media and blah, 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 right? So anyways, here's our interview, our brand new interview with John McEntee of Incantation. Enjoy. Yeah, John, how you doing? This is uh, James here in Texas. Thanks for making time and uh, welcome back to the show, right? Uh, you were here yes, uh, about great. two years ago, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome, that's awesome. Uh, so before we speak of your new music, uh, I want to mention you guys, you just finished the world tour, can I say that? Uh, about uh, close yeah. close to 40 days there, up and down, 30 something days, I believe. How did that go? Yeah, that went great. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, it went totally, totally killer. I mean, the response was great. The sh- you know, shows were awesome. And yeah, basically went around the world in about 36 days or something like that. It's pretty crazy. But it was awesome. It was a great, great experience. Wow, that those must be are awesome. Those are awesome experiences for sure. Uh, I've done some local yes. shows here as a musician here in my hometown, close mm-hmm. to San Antonio, and uh, that is exhausting itself. I can imagine uh, flying, <laughs> flying to Australia, you know, uh, back and forth in Europe and this and that. Wow. How do you? Uh, yeah. How do you keep up after all these years? How do you? What's your secret here? How do you? How do you not get tired? <laughs> well, first of all, I, I would say I do get tired, so. That's definitely, you know, a, a issue. But overall, it's like, yeah, you know, the adrenaline of getting to, getting to be able to do all this stuff really kind of keeps you going. I mean, especially for the shows and stuff. I mean, you could have, you could be totally beat from, you know, the day or whatever. But when it's time to play the show, kind of like just the, um, you know, yeah, adrenaline kind of takes over and you're able to just, you know, pull out all this extra energy you didn't know you had. You know, for me, you know, just with doing vocals too, it just, for me, I just gotta try to rest as much as possible before playing and stuff to be able to, um, you know, be able to perform properly and stuff. I mean, I kind of have, kind of have it down pretty good now where I don't have to really worry that much, but still, you know, good rest is really the most, the key to being able to, you know, travel so much and everything and sometimes just finding ways to rest on your own you know like yeah, unfortunately on a plane or something like that or inside yeah. of a moving vehicle or something like that it's not perfect but it's yeah. you know it's what it is you know it'll work yeah so what you're saying is yeah. if you don't have enough rest you might not be able to, to do the death metal voice or what you're saying are you talking about your your body your health your, yeah. your, your... well it's just what I've noticed through the years was you know, because in the past when I had problems with my vocals, it would be because of uh, lack of sleep most of the time is like the major issue. Um, so these days I just try to really focus on getting getting enough sleep. It's basically, for me, doing vocals, the most important thing besides sleep is also just being nice and hydrated and stuff. It really helps get the voice in so it can really capture the tones that I'm looking for when you know, trying to do it because if I'm if I'm too dehydrated it just the throat it just ends up feeling dry and it's a little tough to tougher to do. Any bad experiences uh, this last tour? No. No no all of it was actually really good. I mean the shows were amazing. Um, the travels you know there's, I mean, there's travel issues which always suck. I mean if if I had to pinpoint one bad experience was when we flew from Poland to Dubai on Emirates Air. I mean, their their uh, luggage system is just total bullshit, and they end up charging us like, I don't know, we'll, we'll say close to $2,000 in extra luggage fees just to get what it from. What the hell? Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, from there to, um, you know, from Poland to Dubai which was just ridiculous. I mean, I could understand paying a couple hundred dollars is understandable, you know, even up to five or six hundred, but, you know, got close to two two thousand dollars. It's just, it's just, um, wow. it's just bullshit. You know, they're basically just like um, trying to fleece you, you know, it's not, not really being like 
you know, they're just, they're just, a lot of the airlines are just assholes. They just do, you know, right. want to make money off you and they don't care about doing the right thing or not, you know? European uh, airlines, yeah. basically, yeah. I've seen some stories, yeah. I just saw, uh, yeah, and you, yeah. yeah, I saw a post uh, of Kevin from D site. Uh, where uh, they basically showed up with no equipment to the gig. They lost their guitars. They lost their Steve's uh, uh, drum equipment, and uh, and then finally uh, Glenn's bass. So they were just borrowing stuff left and right. So wow, in Europe. Yeah, that. Yeah, their their problem is not is something that is pretty common. I mean, when we flew to Europe this time, luckily we we flew there a couple of days early to practice while we were in the Netherlands. And um, yeah, my basically my guitar didn't show up. Wow. Uh, our, my guitar didn't show up. Uh, Dan's guitar didn't show up. Um, yeah, so it was just we had to basically wait a couple of days for our stuff to finally arrive. Wow. Luckily, it arrived for our first show, but it was just it's just ridiculous with all the all the money you spent. I mean, the flights these days to Europe are very expensive compared to what they were just a few years back and you're paying more for luggage and the fact that they can't even always get it to you in time it's just ridiculous that you're paying all this money and they can't even do their job properly it's, it just seems all fucked up I mean, that's that's not the most important about you know touring um you know the world or whatever right now is dealing with the flight situation i mean everything's more expensive but the flight situation is the most frustrating because what you're getting for the money that you're spending is not really um, as much as you used to be getting. You used to be able to spend less money, you know, less chance of getting stuff lost, you know, better treatment on the planes, more, a little more space on the planes and stuff in the past. It's just, it's kind of really uh, at hand, uh, the airlines, really all around the world. But Europe seems to be extra, extra fucked lately. Yeah, it's so sad. I mean, as a musician, uh, you guys, uh, you would expect a story like a, a promoter problem or a backline problem or a PA problem, uh, yeah. but this is about airlines. Wow, this is sad. <laughs> yeah, wow. well, the, the thing is, all the promoters that we played for, I mean, really, all the promoters, booking agents, everybody was super cool. I mean, we've had a great experience with, um, you know, the uh, crew that was helping us out. Everything was great. It was, you know, it's more... You know, the airlines, it's, uh, it, it's sad because the way I look at it, it's like to be able to do music, it's like we have to pay all this money to the airlines that doesn't care at all about the music whatsoever. It's just basically big business trying to, you know, make the most amount of profit off each passenger as possible. But it's just lame because it's like it's taken away money from the bands and the promoters and it's just all oh, this is like a big thing that's kind of hurting them uh, the music scene because you know if bands if bands are doing a show at the fly-in you know the amount of money that they're paying for the flights and the luggage and everything is so expensive that you know the guarantee that the band makes is less and you know the promoter is spending extra money they don't need to pay it's just it's a real it's a real issue it's really but a, a big part of you know the problem with touring. I mean, the last year when we um, toured Europe in the summer, um, our flights were in the ballpark of uh, over ten thousand dollars for our flights yeah. and luggage just to get over to Europe. And that's only for four people. I mean, that's that's crazy. It used to be the same flights with luggage would maybe cost about four. Um, Four thousand, five thousand on the high end, and it was basically at least double um, yeah. last year. You know, it's gotten a little bit better now, but still not very good. It was still super expensive. You know, like I said the service service sucks. So yeah, that's a bummer. And I hate to go rant on the airlines, but yeah. that's really only that's really the whole man. I can't think of any other bad things. Everything else was fucking awesome on the tours. You know, pretty much. I was just all flight stuff that sucked <laughs> yeah you're not the first to to complain or, or about airlines other artists a bunch have said the same thing and it's just yeah. horrible so, yeah in fact I, I seen a post I think it was around Hellfest time that um, Lord Araman uh, was 
complaining about Air France losing like a bunch of their stuff. Like, I don't know if it was like their guitars or if there was some of their stage stuff or whatever, but yeah, basically they had to play the show, I think, without some of their gear and stuff, you know? Wow. And I, I remember last summer when we were, we were playing a sh- I think we were, I can't remember where we were at. I want to say it was, we were playing Exit Fest in Serbia and um, Rod and Christ were coming. I mean, it was a different fest, but Rod and Christ just, you know, got to the hotel and we got to the hotel and we're friends with them pretty, you know, known them for a while. And we are talking with them. And it was like all their gear didn't show up too, pretty much for the show, you know? So they, they had a really great spot. They were opening up on a fest or, or playing right before King Diamond. Our, our merciful fate or whatever and they had to borrow gear to be able to play the show you know it's just these kind of things are just yeah. you know I don't oh. get how they screw it up so much they used to know how to do it before the pandemic they used to know how to get you your luggage in time for some reason now they, they, they like forgot one of the basic uh, things about being in airlines besides getting you to where you want to go getting your stuff there too it should be should be um you know, it should yep. just be common sense. They should be able to do it. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I think I have a solution, John. I think I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look for a billionaire, and I'll buy you guys uh, yes. uh, uh, your own jet. And in every death, <laughs> we'll start with the death metal bands, <laughs> right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes, trust me. Yes, I mean it's crazy because yeah, the, the bands that could like afford it, afford their own jet, I don't have to worry about it that much. It's like all those the younger bands or smaller bands. Like us or something that are like struggling like crazy to try to make things work and you don't have access to something like that so yeah it's, it's a bummer but it's okay i mean it yeah. you know it's one it's it's there's always going to be something that bands have to deal with that's negative to be able to do um what what we love doing so it's not like that big of a deal i mean we, we at this point now when we take a flight, we're all just like, okay, this is going to be fun. You know, we know before getting there that somehow we're going to get something that's going to be <laughs> fun. Well, but, you know, like, yeah. you know, but once you're there and you're playing the shows and everything, you know, that that's just amazing. So you kind of, it, it, it's, you're able to not think of it for a while, you know, so you have to take the next flight, you know? Yeah, so, uh, well, changing subjects here, Unholy defecation a brand new album coming out uh, in a couple of weeks i guess august 25th uh relapse records yes. are you excited for this album um yeah i i mean i think we all are in the band i mean we're, i guess we're always excited for a new album but this one i feel um you know i i'm just happier with this album than i was with the previous album you know i was happy with the last one but there were a couple issues you know that I just wasn't excited about and this one I think we kind of really got the sound that I think uh, works for us where we're able to get the um, a good production but still had that dirty raw edge to it and um, you know it, it still has a kind of underground vibe to it which I think is good um, I really like and I just like the overall just I mean I like the overall album the overall songs I'm really happy with I like the collaboration between the members of the band we just really did a lot of musical collaboration on every song so you know it's all really fun cool stuff to be in a band and um you know work with such amazing people on songs and yeah it's just some, something that we're definitely you know extremely proud of and looking forward to having people hear the whole thing because i know the couple songs were are out because of the um you know our the singles or whatever but you, with our albums, a lot of times, I don't think you can really get the full picture unless you hear the whole thing because there isn't just like one type of song or two yeah. types of songs on the album. You try to really mix it up and get different kind of vibes throughout the whole thing. When you guys sat down to write this stuff, uh, do you write, I mean, do you think of of the fans, what they're going to like? Are they going to approve, disapprove? Or do you think of how it's going to sound live or uh, what, what goes through your mind when you're... Yeah coming up with a riff or well, lyrics yeah i mean for myself i don't really i don't really put the fans um you know into consideration when writing it because for us it's always been very personal the writing process and doing stuff and it's like 
I guess I have a concept where, you know, we have to write what we believe in, what we feel is the right thing to do. And, you know, if, if people are going to enjoy it, they're going to enjoy it because they like what we do and they relate to what we're doing and we're not trying to just they cater to them and stuff. So I think um, for us, it brings us kind of closer to our fans because we feel a, a stronger connection because you know we are tr not we are a band that isn't really trying to crowd please um with our music i mean of course it's great that people like it and stuff but it's not the main goal the main goal is getting out whatever the expression it is that we're trying to get out with the song and that there is a a reason for, in, in our opinion for the song to exist and not just um not just be something that is throw it out there just so we can release a new album kind of thing or whatever uh, what I've heard so far, uh, the new songs, Concordat, if that's the right pronunciation, the pact. Yes. Uh, yeah. Homunculus, Spirit Made Flesh. These are badass, badass, awesome jams. I mean, where do you get your ideas from? Where do you, uh, do they just pop up in your head or do you listen to other bands or what, how do you come up with this stuff? Yeah. Um, basically, I mean, I've been writing music now for quite some time, you know, I mean, it's it's been over 30, well, I've been well over 30 years I've been at least attempting to write music to some extent. So at this point in my, um, say, music writing career, I, I really kind of have a good idea in my head of what I'm trying to get across with the song and that I, I want to write. Like, I'll, like beforehand, I'll get like an idea of what I'm thinking of and then you know, I'll try to, you know, it's, sometimes it's just an expression that I want to express with the music. Sometimes it's um, such a general idea. And then I'll just try to write the music based on, say, my imagination of what I think is going to be something, you know, that's meaningful to me or whatever. And then, you know, it's whatever, whatever we come up with, you know, I'll come up with, say, like a a bass, either a shell of a song or maybe a couple of riffs here or there and then we'll bring them to practice and we'll just try to like work off everyone's vibe on the riffs and stuff like that because part of the big thing about us when writing is that even if somebody comes up with say the um, majority of a, a certain song so all four of us in the song write I mean, it's all, all sorry all four of us in the band write so you know everybody's uh, everybody has ideas out there and stuff but whatever whoever's the idea is we all just try to you know come up with things that maybe work better with it or try to do, basically just kind of vibe off each other and try to make the best of everything that comes our way and do it in a very you know respectful and unselfish way where we're more concerned about the quality of the end product than necessarily who wrote the stuff because it's, it's, you know, in the overall, the band it doesn't matter who wrote what song. It matters if the songs we put on the album are good and that they, you know, really mean something and are, you know, just a, a representative of everybody in the band because everybody, it's important that everybody's voice be heard as far as um, musically in, in the songs. It's not something where I'll come up with a, a full song and just be like, okay, this is it, this is the way it is, just play the parts, you know, it's always, you always got to give people, um, you know, a place to put in their own feeling in there, in one way or another, because, you know, if the, the people that you're jammed with are the right people, then they'll be able to add to the songs, and on this, in this situation, um, you know, I mean, everybody did, but especially with the addition to having Luke Shively on guitar, he really, he really brought things up to, another level and added a whole great level of atmosphere to the songs that you know originally they, they you know didn't have so it was really awesome to be able to collaborate you know within the company you know, take things that were already really good and make them great because of his contribution and stuff so it's awesome wow that's cool teamwork that's cool um yes w which is your favorite jam on this new album john uh -huh. That's a tough one to say. I mean, um, like, you know, there's the problem with picking a favorite song is that there's different feelings in different songs, so yeah. different reasons for liking them. But like, 
song invocation. album I really liked a lot because it was a a really interesting collaboration because we just had I think Chuck had a couple riffs that were just hanging out and we decided to just oh you know say okay let's try to make something out of this riff these riffs or whatever and then between all four of us in you know a short period of time maybe five ten fifteen minutes we ended up coming up with the whole song structure and everything it just it just like all fell together like kind of like just that um just just because of the cool vibe and everybody that was um you know involved in it and how well it, how well we worked together to come up with that song kind of on the spot like that and it pretty much stayed the way it was from you know that first kind of rehearsal session that to me those are those are great moments that makes song special but i mean you know, it's really difficult because you know I really like um, I really like all the songs on the album. I think they yeah. all are very expressive and stuff. You know, I got to hear just two songs so far, but I can imagine the rest. It's just a killer. Uh, it's very different than other albums, John. I got to tell you, I do yeah. love all your your work, but there's something about this these new songs here. I'm not sure if it's the mix or or, or the the arrangements or what, but you got something here real real different here, real not different, but you know. Something real special here, so congrats on that. Um, well, thank you. It was crazy because we, when we were mixing the album, because Dan Swano mixed mixed the album again, and he, he did our last like four albums maybe. And um, he was telling me when he was mixing it, he was just like, "There's something special here." He's like, <laughs> "Yeah, it's something, something like it's just something different, you know? That is like." meaningful and strong and it was like and i and i think it's just the the um like i said the teamwork and the the overall vibe in the band is so what good and productive that i think it just came out with um you know when things are firing on all cylinders it just kind of came out that way on the recording at least that's what i'm thinking you know yeah that's correct right there i want to point out your artist uh, responsible for the cover Eliron Cantor, I believe that's the pronunciation. Uh, awesome yes. piece there. Uh, has he done covers for you guys before, or is this just the first cover? Yeah, yeah, he did. He did our last. What was it? I think one, two, three. He did the last? He did the last three covers for us. Um, yeah, he he does really good, and we got we have a good working relationship with him. And we just were able to. Like after doing after doing a couple different covers with him, really kind of figured out the best way to kind of work with him and make sure that we're able to get what we want out of the cover, and he's able to express himself the way you know he wants to with the artwork. But I mean, he's he's a great artist. I mean, he's he's done he's done like the um, the new um, Sepultura yep. or Cavalera. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, um, that, those albums and then also um, yeah. what do you do yeah he did a bunch of stuff he did Creator he did oh Testament uh, I don't know just a whole bunch of yeah. and even the, the new Immolation album he did that that's right artwork for yeah. them he's, he's on Eleron Cantor is a, a great artist he's really been doing a lot of great stuff um, you know over the last well I guess since we've known him the last 10 years or something like that do you tell him what you're looking for or, or does he just basically just throw random pieces at you or, or? Uh, well what what happened um, in this one we tried to make it kind of clear what we wanted from him and try the thing about this album is a concept album and so it was easier to come up with a cover idea because it was only one thing that needed to be kind of shown the problems that we had in the past was when we had albums with lots of different um, different stories on the same album, we'll say, or lyrics with different different themes. Sometimes it's, it's difficult to try and describe, you know, like you want to incorporate all these things in the cover, but at the same time, when you try to do that, you, you, sometimes the cover loses some of its appeal. 
you know how it looks or whatever because you're trying to cram too much into it so uh luckily on this this album we just had one you know one basic concept and basically it's supposed to be just kind of a, a um the kind of the final stages of the creation of an evil god you know basically the, the whole concept of the album and um you did a great job on trying to get the whole vibe of it and stuff and um, yeah we're super super happy with his work let's speak of your voice real quick here john uh last time we spoke uh you told us about how eventually how you developed it and and then how you took over the vocals right uh as being the front man where's your voice yeah. now uh, how do you feel about your voice nowadays yeah, i feel great with it actually um it's been it's really awesome but you know the whole, i mean the vocals has been a process for me because it was something i never really wanted to do i never really prepared for it until i could prepare for doing vocals so um you know, but now I'm at a point where I feel very confident with it, where I'm able to like know what I want to, uh, what tone I want, what kind of expression I want in my vocals, and I'm able to, to uh, execute it. So I'm really, really happy about that. I, I'm, at this point in, um, I say my vocal career, I'll call it, I wouldn't want to call it singing, my vocal career, uh, I think, you know, I'm probably, I feel like I'm at the prime of my, you know, my vocal that I've ever did. And it's kind of, it's really nice to know that, you know, over the years, my vocals, I feel are getting better um, over time, which is exactly how I would want it to go. So, cause I mean, I know a lot of vocals get lamer and lamer as time goes on or something, but yeah. for some reason I'm still able to do it. And I, and I, and I really feel that, um, on these uh, people should be able to hear in these songs the um expressions that i'm trying to get across and the, and the passion and the feeling in the vocals not they're not just um they're not just low growls yeah. um they're low growls but they're also uh passionate or whatever one that passionate sounds like a really windy word but like if passionate was really strong that would be the word i can't think of the right word right now but you know, yeah it's, it's just it's it's meaningful. It's not just. It's not just a, a rur, rur, rur kind of thing. Uh, you know, whatever. A lot. A lot of bands are just very flat with their uh, vocals and stuff, and it works fine for them. But for us, we like to have still some, you know, feeling and um, not just the uh, not just the low tones. Yeah, um, it sounds great. There's nothing I can say about it. It just sounds awesome. Whatever you're doing, keep doing it, and it just sounds great. So, um, well, it's so so nice to hear that from. Um, people, because people seem to really be digging the way the vocals sound, and it's just—it's really great to hear that because it, it, I really take a lot of pride and I take a lot of time trying to make them the best I can. So that's awesome. Yeah, one of the best voices in the whole death metal genre for sure, hands down. I mean, uh, of wow. course, everybody has their own style, and you got Corpus, yes, Corpus Grinder, you got Benton, uh, yes, you got great. yeah, everybody. But you got your own. It's just awesome. It fits in with the, with the riffs and. The whole picture that's the right voice you know that's i guess that's my point so uh awesome Thanks. keep bringing the kill <laughs> i just interviewed charlie corrence a couple of months ago and we all know awesome. he's been doing he's been doing the touring with you guys we know that uh yeah, can, can you talk dude. about uh what is kyle okay uh he, he's not touring right but he's recording can you talk to us about him a little bit or? yeah yeah well kyle, yeah kyle basically retired from touring probably well, it's been a while now it's been 2018 i think he retired from touring he just basically like couldn't do it he like it was basically a work thing you know because he owns his own construction business and he just every time he go on tour he'd have to deal with you know crap with his business at home and stuff and it just made it so it was so much work for him he wasn't able to enjoy himself you know properly on tour and whatnot so it just got to a point where we had to have kind of a a one-on-one -on -one talk about the situation or not a one-to-one -on -one, but like a band talk about it you know and um you know decide what are we going to do because um you know he can't keep going on you know on tours and stuff and you know dealing with all the stress at home and everything but at the same time he didn't want to stop the band from you know moving forward again. and um you know being to its fullest potential so he made the decision to um you know not you know not tour with the band anymore and just do the, the writing and recording stuff and 
you know, we had a couple people filling in. We had, um, in fact, Frank, uh, it's hard to pronounce the last name because he's Dutch, but he plays drums now and um, in God the Throne. He was helping us out for a while, and uh, he, he was a great dude and a great a drummer. It was just too difficult with him being from um, Netherlands. It's too expensive to have him do stuff with us, especially because of work speeds and all that crap. And then, luckily, we found Charlie, um, this guy who made a post looking for a drummer on uh, the tour, and Charlie ended up hitting us up. And um, I gotta say, once, like, literally five seconds into jamming with Charlie, um, I knew he was the right drummer because I could tell that yeah. just from the very beginning, he paid attention to the music. You could tell he's a fan of the band. And it just, it, when he plays with us, it feels so natural when he's able to get the um, the intensity that we need, but also keep the integrity of, you know, uh, Kyle and also even for Kyle Jinro, he, like his stuff, he was able to do both of those styles very authentic. And you just tell it, Charlie puts a lot of a lot of thought and effort into his drum playing, and it's it's an absolute pleasure to um you know jam with charlie in any way especially live it's just so much fun because he has so much energy and he's just so meticulous on how he plays without losing all the vibe because for us a very big part of our sound is getting uh, a, a band vibe together it's not always like it's not just about being yes. super tight um you know perfectionist machine it's almost like we play more in a even though we're a death metal band we play more in a say a 70s type full band jam kind of vibe instead of it. like we're vibing off each other while playing it's not just like hearing click tracks and just playing the stuff or whatever no we're just going for it like four guys in the room just telling the world to fuck off and we're gonna you know kick ass or whatever and it's it's such a pleasure playing with charlie i can't um i, I can't say it enough easy and the fact that on top of everything he's like super nice guy super, yeah he became a super great friend of ours and um super cool you know, yeah. i'm always happy i mean you had the great opportunity of playing with morbid angel on yeah. drums did a phenomenal job awesome ascended dead is killer all the bands that he plays with and records with the the drums always sound fucking awesome because he is just a phenomenal drummer can't say enough good things about him wow that's good to hear john i did see the live uh, a couple of live videos from on youtube where fans post stuff of you guys and he just fits in you know perfect like a glove you know as you say yeah. the chemistry and all that yeah Perfect. Wow. Anyways, let's change it here a bit to uh, before I let you go. Uh, you guys okay. made an appearance on the metal horror movie uh, Death Metal. Yeah. I, be I believe Kyle is an associate producer. How did you get this uh, into this project? Yeah, the, the movie the movie's called Death Metal, and you know it, it's weird because it's something that Kyle hooked up somehow. It was like um, if I remember correctly, this was quite a while ago. It was probably two thousand either 2016 or 17 when it kind of started to come together but as far as i know kyle was just in touch with one of the guys or answered a message from one of the guys that was like looking for bands to be in a horror movie like a death metal bands and then kyle started uh talking with the people you know that were putting were putting it together and they realized that they could film the stuff in Ohio where Kyle's from and be able to do it at a you know cheaper price than it was would have been doing it out in California and stuff so they ended up moving production or you know having production in Ohio with it and then Kyle ended up kind of like doing a lot of the staking out of areas where to do stuff and everything so Kyle got to be kind of involved in a lot of the organization of the movie I don't think he had a lot to do with like the actual um story maybe a little bit but i think most of it is um like just finding the places to film stuff and like he put together uh, we did a free show in um the agora ballroom which is a pop really popular venue in cleveland ohio and they were able to do like that's where they filmed the this intro footage of us playing live and stuff there and then like just a little bit of like it, it's supposed to be like 
we're playing a show with this band. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Biz, uh, Biz, uh, Biz Sinister or something is the, the fake band, and we're supposed to be playing a show with them. And they're kind of like has been band that um, they were, they were doing good for a while and they fucked up and I don't know somehow they just they're not doing well anymore. And this was a show where we played and we kind of kicked ass and they played and they got kind of like booed off the stage and stuff. And then. Um, yeah, then basically from that point on is where the horror movie part starts. Because basically it's, it's kind of a simple concept, but kind of uh, you know kind of a, a deal with the devil kind of thing that they make and try to build up their career and stuff, and then they have to kind of pay for the consequences of it. You know, it's a fun, it was a fun watch. I, I haven't watched the full movie until just recently, and um, it was an enjoyable watch, and it was definitely, um, definitely really nice to have incantation be a prominent part in the movie i mean the first like 10 minutes of the movie is based around us and stuff so it's kind of wow. kind of cool um cool for us you know and you know all everyone in the band loves horror movies too so it's great to be a part of something like that you know it's just a, you know wow. definitely something that we're proud to be um connected to you know where can people find this john is it Tubi? is that correct or, or is another place where yeah well, It, it, uh, yeah, it's on Tubi uh, for free with ads, and, and then you can also get it on Amazon Prime too. I, I, I know. I don't know. I think you could you could rent it on Amazon Prime if you want to watch it without the uh, commercials, or you can watch it on Tubi for free. And the uh, uh, Blu-ray, and like if you want to buy like physical copies of it and stuff. I, I I know it's on Amazon. I'm not sure all the outlets that it's on, but I definitely know it's on Amazon for sale and stuff. Or you might be able to order directly from the company. But it's definitely some something cool. I mean, definitely for um, you know diehard Incantation fans, it's pretty cool to be able to have you know a little bit of extra footage, you know, like live footage from the show and stuff. And, we, and there's a small part where. You know, Kyle, myself, and Chuck are like barely acting, but acting a little bit in the part. You have like a, we have a little bit. Of, Kyle has a couple of lines, and the rest of us just kind of like, um, you know, mumble along or whatever. But it's it's pretty fun. Awesome! Wow. Cool thing to do, you know. Death metal on the big screen. It's awesome. So, what's next for the band and yourself, John? What's on your agenda now? Uh, right now, we're just. We're kind of preparing for the release. I mean, my interview schedule has been insane lately, and but that's the way it always is before an album comes, I guess, released. And I, I really don't mind it, actually. I, I, I like to um, do the press and stuff. And then, beside so that, we're just behind the scenes. We're, we're working out the game plan for touring for, um, you know, the end of 2023 and the beginning of, well, for, for a whole of 2024 and stuff. Um, yeah, besides that, we should have a couple of new songs in the works. We're kind of trying to finish up on our end, too, while we're back from tour. And um, I think, um, yeah, I mean, oh, we, we are doing, I don't, I don't know what they are calling it because it's something different, but we're like, we're, the first show of the tour is actually in October 13th. Oh, that's a good number. I didn't realize that it was on October 13th. Um, it, it's the um, it's in Arkansas of all places. Uh, they, they're having some kind of it's not not the Arkansas Death Fest, but it's something like I can't remember. It's like Evil Dead Fest. I just I just got the name of it just recently. But I can't remember what it is, but that's going to be our first show, and that's that one should be announced like within a day or so. And then besides that. We're doing the um, Hell and Heaven Fest in Mexico at the beginning of um, November, and then we also have um, uh, what's it, um, Mass Destruction Fest okay, in yeah. uh, Atlanta, Georgia. We're doing that too um, nice. in the beginning of November. And then we have a bunch. Of, we have actually a bunch of touring in November, but we just can't announce it. It's going to be a few days, and I think um, once we do announce it, I think. All the old school death metal heads are going to really enjoy it because the concept that we came up for our uh, next U.S. tours, I think, something really cool that a lot of people, a lot, a lot of death heads, were kind of hoping this kind of tour would happen. So I think it would be something really cool. Nice. So before we let you go, John, would you like to send a message to your fans uh, listening to this podcast? 
yeah, it, it definitely. I just want to thank everybody for support. It's really great to be back and do your podcast again. It's, we're just super psyched to have your know, new album on Holy Deification coming out. And um, just can't wait to get back on the road, see everybody, hang out, and, you know, just play some killer fucking death metal. Just, you know, I want to thank everyone too, you know, for all the support. We've been doing this for a long time, and we really, really do appreciate each and every one of your support because you know it's just super important we can't do this without the support from everybody so you know we definitely have to thank everybody for that and yes i look forward to uh, seeing you uh next time we play in texas as well awesome for sure we'll check you guys out in austin or san antonio for sure uh john uh so thank you for yeah, uh awesome. yeah, thank you for your time john i appreciate that and you're you're, you're still a super cool guy and uh very down to earth and uh keep it metal right awesome yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it, and it's great to see that you're still you're still trucking away at the um, you know the podcast show and stuff. That's awesome. Awesome. Once a metal hit, always a metal hit, John. <laughs> thank you for That's that. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you take care, brother. So there you go. We have Death Metal on the big screen. The name of the movie is Death Metal appropriately and uh, you guys can find it on Tubi, as he said, uh, and the other uh, I think it's Amazon or Prime, one of those and so forth and so on so you guys can look for it and he also spoke of Eleran Cantor the badass artist responsible for these badass album covers badass badass artist badass music badass death metal for us fanatics death metal fanatics that is and uh, a big old congratulations goes out to the guys in incantation to Luke Chuck Kyle and of course Mr. McEntee and uh, Charlie also does all the touring as of their last couple of tours, I believe. So anyways, uh, pick it up. Very cool record. It's going to come out. I got to listen to it. Unholy Deification. Awesome tracks. You guys are going to melt when you hear this stuff. Their best to date, in my opinion. So congrats to the guys of Incantation and everyone at Relapse Records for bringing the kill. As far as us in the podcast, thank you guys for accompanying us once more. Don't forget... To subscribe, like, share, download, stream, blah, blah, blah. You know what to do, right? So anyways, on behalf of your friend James, don't forget to keep it metal. That metal interview.